Now I'm just going to share with you some of the little gadgets that I use. Some are very obvious, some less so. But we'll just take a look at some of these things. Um, so there's two things, two, two things you, you can't see from here uh, are the two monitors I use. I use one monitor that's right behind the camera that's showing me what the front camera sees and it's hard to see all of it because the camera's in front of it, but that's sort of the point. It's what I can look at without being so obvious that I'm looking and checking stats on the camera and see the recording status. And then I've got a secondary uh, monitor that can show me the view from the top-down camera or if I'm live streaming can show me chat comments. Having those two big monitors makes it much easier to see when things are in focus, when things are set up. So I highly recommend two monitors. So let's talk about some of the gadgets that are used to wire things to those two monitors. Um, there's splitters which take one HDMI and send it into two, and there's switchers that switch uh, between multiple inputs sending to one output. And I have found that you can get, in general, a powered version of these that power off a USB plug, like this has here, and then unpowered, which just use power inside the transmitting cables to do whatever power it needs. I have found that the powered ones are more reliable. The unpowered ones occasionally lose their signal and just like flicker for a minute. They, don't, they usually keep working, but they'll flicker off briefly and then flicker back on. So I like the powered ones. And so I've got a power strip down in the cabinet that's powering all these switchers and splitters. And I use a bunch of these to give me flexibility of what's shown on each monitor. For example, the front monitor has got switchers that allow me to switch between showing me the direct feed from the front camera, which is in 4K, or showing me the output of my PC, which is 10 feet away, so that when I'm live streaming, I can have it send to that monitor the output of OBS so I can see what's streaming, I can see all the stats, or when I'm using an A10 Mini, I can switch it to that so I can see the output of that. So having a bunch of these configured, I can control what gets displayed on each monitor and change it depending on my needs. So those I love, I've got a bunch of those. I've got a dual SD card reader for my PC. Um, there are lots of SD card readers, you know, you've got, you're recording uh, onto your cameras, each camera has an SD card. So when I finish recording a multi-camera shot, I've got a front camera SD card, a top camera SD card, maybe a third camera. When you transfer a 50 gigabyte or more file from an SD card to a computer, you can go go take a break and get something to eat. That's how long it takes to transfer 30 gigabytes from an SD card to your computer. And so I love having a dual SD card reader. You could actually have multiple single ones. Uh, they're powered by USB. But the ability to put both in at the same time and cue them to copy all the files over and then you can go and take a break for a half hour while the files copy. And I use a software called Ultra Copier that lets me queue all the copies or move and then I can start them copying and walk away. And sometimes if you know if you recorded multi-hour sessions, there's it's huge files and being able to set them all going and then walk away is very useful. Um, Let's talk about arms a little bit. When I showed you the view of the room, you could see I've got these Manfrotto 244 arms, which are these very expensive $100 arms. You can see what I've got here is this is the arm itself, the Manfrotto 244. And along with this, they sell something that they call a super clamp. Other companies make versions of this as well and the arm will mount onto this, which I'll show you in a second. 
and um, the arm itself can hold a camera up to about six or seven pounds and then this can easily hold the arm and that. I'll show you this clamping onto something. It's set up so it can clamp onto a pipe or about up to two inches wide. And you can get different company versions that can go up to three inches. And then I use attached to my arm an Arca Swiss tripod head, which I use for all of my cameras so that I can easily take them on and off. We'll start with the super clamp here or any other knockoff version that you have. I'm going to orient it this way and cinch it down. It's got a very strong grip and once you tighten it up it will hold a lot of weight. Okay and then this here is where we'll attach the arm. So let's just tighten this up a little bit. We'll put our arm in and it will just lock in with this little button that keeps it from falling out and then we tighten it up. Okay, so there's the arm locked in. Now, the nice thing about the friction arm is that it's just this one knob and once you loosen it, you've got all of the degrees of freedom to arrange the camera any way you want and then you tighten it and everything locks in. So the way I use it is I put a little tripod head on the top, on the front. Gives it a little more reach. But the main point of having the tripod head with the Arca Swiss mount, which is what this is, well there's two main purposes for it. Let's bring this up a little bit more. The first reason is that with this Arca Swiss mount I can easily attach a camera if I want to swap cameras, I want to take the camera down to work on it. But the other advantage of it is, once you get the arm approximately positioned the way you want, then I can use the tripod head to do small adjustments of the angle. And this is actually perfect for the top-down camera, because the top-down camera, you would think you would want it pointing straight down to the table, in the center of the table. But it's not the case. Uh, the smaller the game is, the more it'll be focused, it'll be moved towards the lip of the table where I'm sitting. So frequently, depending on the game, I'll adjust the zoom and then I'll move the camera a little bit that way or a little bit this way to get it exactly how I want it. And so having the being able to adjust that with the tripod head is much more convenient than loosening the main knob of the arm. When you loosen the main knob of the arm, you'll see, let me tighten the rest of this. When I loosen the main knob of the arm, everything basically gets loose, all of the joints. And so it's easy to make large adjustments, but it's quite hard to make just small little adjustments. So being able to have these two ways of adjusting it with the tripod head for small adjustments and the arm knob for large adjustments is the perfect combination. It's super stable. It'll stay for weeks, months, whatever. It never moves. It never drifts. And there you go. It costs, but it is worth it. This is a much lighter weight, smaller arm, same idea. You loosen it and then you can adjust it exactly how you want and then you tighten it and it holds its position. This has got a smaller clamp that could hold on. You would only use this for lightweight stuff, but for example, to hold the microphone in position, I use a small arm like this. This would be cheap, $20 or so. Um, I use a dock, hard drive dock here. That's what this is. And this is USB connected. If you're going to be serious about making videos, you're going to be generating huge amounts of video and you're going to need to uh, back it up. You're gonna run out of space on your hard drives. So a dock like this lets you buy some spare hard drives you can buy 
cheap, slow, 12 terabyte hard drives. Just pop it in there, make copies of your files as you're editing them before they go up to YouTube or to keep permanent copies. And when you fill up a 12 terabyte hard drive in a year or so, you just put it on the shelf, drop another one in. And um, I use uh, some file compare software, WinMerge is a free one, so that I'm while I'm editing, I'm constantly making backups to my backup drive. Another device that I really like is this pedal, uh, USB. This is actually wireless Bluetooth. And it can connect to your PC or your tablet, which is what I have it connected to. And you can switch pages backwards and forwards with your feet. So most of the time that I'm recording or live streaming, I'm not recording from a script, so this is of no use. But occasionally if we do a review and we've got a bunch of pages, I'll go onto Google Slides, I'll set up multiple pages just with some rough notes, and then I can put this down below and use my foot to advance to a page forward, page back. And in fact, I mount the tablet and I'll show you some pictures of this. I can mount the tablet with one of these arms so that the tablet is sitting right in front or right slightly above the camera. You can see I'm looking at it now. Um, and so this is great for switch paging between pages on a Google Slides document, very useful. Now, I don't have a teleprompter. Some people on YouTube, especially if you're reading from a script, a teleprompter can be amazing because it lets you look straight into the lens, into the audience while you're reading. Now, I don't uh, read off a script or anything, so I don't have much use for it. And I have found it to be a pain in the ass to set up. If you have to adjust the camera rel uh, regularly, having to set up the teleprompter setup because it has to fit over the camera and has the tablet. So it's a bunch of trouble. I have found that the Put it, mounting a tablet slightly above the lens is the sweet spot for me. It would look a little weird if I was reading from it, like now I'm looking at it now. So if I was constantly reading here, you can see that my eyes are pointed at uh, six inches a foot up. So I wouldn't do it for reading, but for glancing at notes, it works fine. What I'm going to do in this little segment is show you what it looks like when the eyes are looking off camera compared to on camera. So you can see how distracting it will be for your audience if you do read from some monitor or tablet that's set aside. Now, while I don't read from a script while I'm recording or playing, I do often like to have some notes on a tablet that I look at occasionally or even print it out and paste it up. So this is sort of relevant to me to the extent that I'm going to occasionally be looking at my notes. Okay, so I don't have a teleprompter set up, but I'm going to say a couple lines looking directly into the camera where a teleprompter would be displaying. So, you know, a couple inches above the lens, a couple inches below. So reading line one, reading line two, reading line three, reading line four. Okay, there we go. There were my eyes looking at about where the lens would be. All right, now I'm going to be looking below to where I do have a tablet placed. It's about five inches below, the top of the tablet is about five inches below the lens and the bottom of the tablet might be a foot below the lens. So I'm gonna read top, middle, and lower and you'll see. Now I find that it's most obvious when you're reading and you're looking below the lens. So let's see if that holds up. Reading line one, reading line two, reading line three, and now back up to the lens. So you can see how distracting that would be if you occasionally have to look down and then look back up. It's not the worst thing in the world, but you don't want to be reading a long script like that. Now let me look uh, a foot above the lens down to a couple inches above the lens. That's where 
I would look if I've got my tablet mounted directly above the camera, which I have a little arm to do. So let's see how distracting that looks. Reading line one, reading line two, reading line three. And now back at the lens. So looking up in the middle of the tablet and looking down. So you can see, I find that it's not as distracting when you're looking up. It doesn't look as unpleasant to the audience as it does when you're looking down. And you could see if you were looking off to the side, now I'm looking to the right, maybe a foot to the right. And now I'm looking to the left, a foot to the left. And now I'm looking back at the center of the camera. So that will just give you some idea of how distracting it will be to your audience when you're looking in various different, slightly offset from the lens, if you're checking your notes or reading from a script to help you decide if it's worth all the hassle and expense of getting a teleprompter device. Here's another gadget that some people don't know exists, but is uh, super useful. This is a USB C to HDMI output that will also charge your tablet. So if I'm playing a board game that uses a tablet, I want to get the tablet signal, the tablet video HDMI to one of the input sources that I'm capturing or live streaming. Most modern tablets as of 2022 and for the last couple of years, you can connect a USB and a, uh, to HDMI cable and do that fine. Whatever you see on the tablet also gets sent to HDMI. That's fine, but what you don't realize is that's depleting your battery as you're running it because the USB port is also what you use to charge your tablet. So if you're gonna be doing longer streams, you can get a device like this, you plug it into uh, uh, um, your power strip, your USB wall wart, you plug this into your tablet and there's your HDMI out, but while it's sending the HDMI out, it's also charging your tablet so you won't have to worry about running out of power. Love that. Here is my 4K USB 3 capture device. Now I have a PCIe card in my desktop to capture four sources of HDMI but only at 1080. Occasionally, I wanna capture at 4K resolution, and that's what I use this for. I wouldn't try to capture multiple sources at 4K with multiple ones of these, because they can overload the USB 3 bus, but for one source, I can capture in 4K very cleanly with that. The Elgato Stream Deck, um, I could not live without for live streaming. And this one's about $75. You can get a big one for 200 and a super small one. For me, this is the sweet spot. The big one takes up too much space on the table when I'm playing. This one with 15 keys is fantastic. And you can set up multiple pages. You can actually have multiple sets of 15 buttons. They can all be customized to show whatever graphic you want. And you could use this whether you were streaming with a dedicated hardware device like an A10 Mini or whether you're using OBS. They both have plugins that work fantastically with that. This would be my number one device for live streaming. But you could also configure this with your video editor to help you remember commonly used buttons and keys. Okay, moving on um, over here, let's talk about this little mini tripod I have. This is a newer tripod. I think it's about 60 bucks. You can configure the feet differently or stretch them out more flat, depending on how low you want it to be. You can adjust the height of this to go up and down. You can, it comes with a ball head. And let's talk about the idea of a ball head tripod for a bit here. So a ball head tripod, if you can see, you loosen it and then you can change the angle of it completely. Now I've got a mini little tripod on my front camera and a ball head is the common head you'll get and it's the more it's the cheaper and affordable head. 
The only problem with the ball head tripod, you can see this has actually got two adjustments. It's got, uh, no it doesn't, it's just got the one. So when I loosen this, I can rotate and I can change the angle of the head, 360 degrees. When I tighten it, everything stops. I can't rotate, I can't tilt. The only problem with this is that for my main front facing camera, the only thing I ever want to adjust is tilting down and up, depending on what kind of shot I want. I never want to tilt it this way, off level, and I never want to rotate it. Um, the rotation I wouldn't mind because I can easily set that up, but when it tilts a little, it's a bit of a pain to get it perfectly straight. So they sell other kinds of tripod heads, which is what this is. So I recommend if you've got the money, if you want to throw it on another 80 bucks, you look for a separate pan tilt head or three-way um, head, they call it. And that doesn't just have one knob to loosen it. It's got one knob to loosen tilting forward and back and a separate knob to twist left and right and a separate knob to go left and right. So that makes it less uh, painful to adjust. But there are ways to get around it too. If when I was just using a ball head, instead of adjusting the tripod head to tilt down, I would use blocks under the front leg um, just to lift up a couple inches when I want to tilt it up a little bit. And that's got the advantage of those blocks. You know, you can label, this is the block I use when I do a close up talking head shot and uh, this is the block I use when I want to show all of the table so that's fine too. On top of the tripod head is an Arca Swiss plate. Some of the tripods and tripod heads you buy will come with Arca Swiss which is just a standard for this quick removable plate. This part goes into the camera for example here's a camera I have here. There's an Arca Swiss plate here on the camera and that fits right in and tightens up and then holds it in. And the advantage of that, of using an Arca Swiss, there's nothing magical about an Arca Swiss plate and mount, but it's standardized. So I have an Arca Swiss mount on my front mini tripod and on my two arms that are mounted on the top. So I can move any camera on and off, switch places. This little spare tripod I have also has the Arca Swiss. It just makes it convenient if everything is using the same connector. So that's that. And you don't wanna be having to unscrew this every time you wanna take the camera down to mess with it or do something else with it. So having these quick remove plates are super useful. Another little gadget I use with my top-down camera is this little rubber band. And this is used to fix zoom drift, which I never knew was a thing. But what happens is when you mount your camera, you can see I've got one on this camera. You mount this camera, it's heavy, it could be five pounds up, and it's got a zoom. And what happens is that the zoom is loose enough that if it's pointing down, it over time, it'll just drift down and zoom in. So this little rubber band just goes around the zoom dial here and gives it enough friction that it doesn't drift. You could probably use just a piece of tape or a found rubber band and that would do it just fine. Don't need to buy one specifically designed for that. What else? Uh, this is some gaffer's tape. If you want to feel like you're doing things professionally, when you're running wires, I've got run wires running down the side of the wall here to my camera, and uh, I don't have any running on the floor, but if you did, this is nice, wide tape. It's a little bit like blue painter's tape in that it's easy to peel off, um, but it's, it's very nice for keeping wires either on a wall or out of the way or down on the floor if you've got some or just tied together. It's a nice removable tape. 
And what's the last gadget here I've talked about? Well, I've talked about in the audio section how important it is to have a pair of headphones. They don't have to be great headphones, but a pair of headphones so that you can listen to your audio and really pick up when there's noise in it and when there isn't. It's uh, invaluable for getting your noise right. 